Namaste Capricorn. This is your bi-weekly reading. It's going to go through right into um, March 15th, the first two weeks of March it will cover. And I will hopefully be back on the 16th with another reading. By then, Mercury Retrograde should be over. So hopefully my computer, my phone, all, all the stuff I've been having trouble with will be back to normal. Um, in the meantime, let's get into it. Beginning with an energy for you of the King of Winter. Um, a lot of the cards that I saw as I was shuffling for you and that we are beginning with now, uh, very similar to those of your fellow Earth signs. Um, repeat cards from the Taurus reading, the Virgo reading. That's why I don't really mind doing one reading for um, you know a, a given element. But I do like to give you guys um, the Earth signs each your own reading because you have given me also, or you continue to give me, you know, the support back right back, you know, by watching the videos. So. I don't mind at all, whereas even my own element, air, not so much. <laughs> in any case, let's get into yours. Speaking of air, we're beginning with the king of winter, who's intelligent, impartial, respected, and unemotional. For me, he's often um, like a professional type of person, a judge, a lawyer, um, a realtor, a doctor, accountant, something, you know, like professional services. At this time, it's very important that you communicate clearly, be objective and unemotional, and act as professionally as possible. If you need advice, seek out the most experienced expert that you can find. It's that kind of person, like this no-nonsense type of person that's very uh, fair and diplomatic, but serious, you know? Um, could be representing Mercury himself, honestly, or even Venus herself, even though it's the king. Mars currently located in your sign. So we may see that fire. Actually, the fire showed up in um, both the Taurus and the Virgo reading several times over the Knight of Wands showed up. So the next card I normally wouldn't mention because it's upside down, but it is one that showed up in each of the other readings and it's the Seven of Summer or Cups. It's time to stop procrastinating and to make a decision so that you can move forward with a priority. If you need to do more research, then do so, but don't overthink the situation. Listen to your heart. You may have several different possibilities or goals or dreams. These could represent many things like that. And um, yeah, this need to stop procrastinating. Your ruler, Saturn, is going to cause that for a lot of people. Again, because Mars is there. With the... Rider Weight Tower will begin with the Two of Wands. Twos in general are about faith, duality, the need for balance, you know, the importance of balance, partnership, relationships, couples. Uh, in the Tarot, this Two of Wands specifically is the Divine Union or, you know, Soulmate, Twin Flame card of the Tarot. In friendship and business, it can also be about like the process or the progress in manifesting, um, you know, again, better relationships, partnerships, but it can be about work and stuff too. Or having faith that uh, what you're working on manifesting is actually going to materialize. And that's probably what it means for you because right after that is Major Arcana card, the star. Card number 17. And um, this card is all about that, like manifesting and being successful. So your prayers being answered, your wishes being granted, your dreams coming true. It's also about communication. It represents the sign of Aquarius, as may the king of winter. Gemini, Aquarius, Libra, or someone likened to those traits or attributes, if it's an actual person in your life. Behind the star... Also upright, oh wow, you have Major Arcana card Judgment, which also showed up in the other readings, um, albeit reverse in the others. And Judgment is about abundance that is earned, first and foremost for me. It, it's also a card that's about second chances, second time around. So whether that's about a friendship, you know, we stopped being friends for a while, or the universe, some sort of circumstance pulled us apart, and here we are, we've been put back, you know, together again friendship, romantic partners, um, job opportunities, you know, you missed one, they didn't call you, now they're calling you back, or you used to work there, they want you to work there again, it's been years, um, 
school, you know, maybe you dropped out or you didn't finish or you want to go back for another degree, all kinds of second chances, second time around. And it can be literal too, in connection with a judgment, like a legal judgment, especially again with the king of winter here who may be a, um, a lawyer or a judge. So it can be a second chance, like maybe you get parole or probation, you know, instead of actually, or you get to pay a fine instead of actually, you know, having to go to jail or something like that. Um, with the Six of Cups also upright, right behind judgment, that second time around could be with somebody from your past. You know, it's, again, a soulmate relationship, a twin flame, divine union type of relationship. Six of Cups is a soulmate card in the tarot. Again, we started with the Two of Wands, which is the, you know, traditionally the twin flame card. This is somebody from your past. Or if it has nothing to do with a person, it's perhaps something from your past that you're finally manifesting. It's a second chance, a second time around. I've always wanted to do this. I've always wanted to be a this. And now you're getting the chance to do it. You know, that wish coming true, that dream manifesting. If you maintain your faith. Okay, that was your reading. No, I'm only kidding. We're going we're gonna to do... Um, one at least, but possibly two spreads. So we'll take these and we'll, um, you know, do the normal four cards that, that I do for these types of readings. This one would be the one that, oh, most directly represents you. It is your energy, your element, pentacles, the ace of pentacles in reverse. Um, beautiful card for you. So what is it about? Um, some, that dream for somebody definitely coming again, but perhaps deferred. You know what a dream deferred? It's like we got to be patient. We have to hold on to that intention, hold on to that faith that the two represents if we want it to actually come true because there's something in the way. Maybe Mercury. Mercury retrograde in Pisces. Seven of Cups for me often does, even though it's not a court card, represent the sign of Pisces specifically because that Neptune energy is very dreamy and foggy and head in the clouds. And so that's how you get caught up in like fantasy. Ace of Pentacles in reverse can also be about being overly concerned with money. Maybe you have some sort of again, judgment bill, something, some legal something where that it has you like all in your head. How am I going to pay or what's going to happen? Or maybe you're wait, awaiting a judgment. Am I ever going to get my money? It's delayed. It's a dream deferred. What's happening? And so you, you're, you're perhaps overly concerned. Yes, we all have to, you know, pay attention to our finances, our, you know, our checkbook balance, our bank balance, and make sure everything is right. But when we become overly like um, obsessed, it becomes toxic. It becomes... Um, like that devil energy from the tarot where we become sort of chained to it and then we block our blessings. So um, this card kind of guides you, reminds you that abundance is coming to you um, and also that you really the idea with manifestation is to believe you already have it. You're just waiting for it to you know, like reach here. And so, um, you know, this card is a reminder of that to sort of get you to shake off the worry and to count the blessings for those things you already have, you know, manifested in a tangible way that you can pick them up and touch them. Um, and like leave the rest to the universe, you know, the rest to God, whatever, whichever you believe. Also, um, speaking of God in the universe, he, she, it may be calling upon you to do bigger, better things in the very near future. Could involve like a co complete like change in career, um, your way of life, the way you do things. And you are just guided to not fight this. Like just do it. Like how Nike says, just go with the flow. You'll be fine if you don't try to, um, to, to fight it, you know? In terms of work, again, you may need to um, consider new things 
asking for new responsibilities or accepting new responsibilities that are offered to you because this is something in the works for you, just different, bigger, better, far more grand, like where you belong. In terms of love, um, funny enough, it can be a warning of you know some sort of issues of jealousy or even greed, selfishness, that those types of things in um, committed relationships, or maybe like comparing yourself to one another or to the ex or, you know, whatever, as if you're not on the same team. So be careful of that. Um, otherwise, of course, an ace of any element or suit, um, you know, is about new beginnings. So that's the ultra positive, especially if you're single, this could definitely be about you meeting somebody new if you get out and mingle. Next up, oh, here's your worry. Here's your worry. And it's, the, it's this element, the swords, the air. So the nine of swords is largely about anxiety. You really need to look and try to figure out what is the root of this? What is it that's making me feel like this? And try not to blame yourself or other people or situations for the way that you're feeling, like really try to narrow it down and to get, you know, so that you can shake it off. Sometimes breathing exercises help people, but not everybody. But if, if you are one um, who you think it may help for you to like, you know, just like pause and breathe slowly, deeply in, out, that may make you feel better and feel more calm if you're truly experiencing anxiety. Because um, for some people, it can be pretty traumatic, you know. Um, to go through anxiety. And this card, when it shows up, it, it, it says that that's really not necessary. So I'd hate to see or, you know, feel that some of you guys are out there are really just getting completely stressed out, maybe uncontrollably um, anxious about things that you don't really have to worry about. This card shows up to say, like, you're worried, but it's, uh, it's, it's just unnecessary. So like you're stressing yourself out, you're creating this and you're potentially manifesting negativity in your own life by focusing upon negative things that actually don't exist right now. You have the potential to bring them into reality, you know, self-fulfilling prophecies. I, I, splint, I said to one of your um, fellow earth signs that, cause this card showed up for them too. It may have showed up for the other two, like for both. Um, now that I think about it, but when I was little, my mother used to say, if you pray, don't worry. If you worry, don't pray. And, you know, not everybody prays, not everybody, you know, believes in that, but meditation, like meditating on something, focusing on something, a focused intention is part of your manifestation. The law of attraction, all of that is prayer. And, you know, you can, it's just by a different name, you know, um, or you could say prayer is the law of attraction by a different name, vice versa. So we have the ability to manifest what we don't want as easily as we do what we want. It's all about that focus intention. So if your focus intention is this, it looks like this, this is what you'll bring about to yourself. And so that may be what's the, what the delay is. Like until you change your mindset, you're going to be delayed. You know what I mean? With your finances, some of you may feel like you're um, robbing Peter to pay Paul. If this is your energy, it doesn't have to necessarily be your energy. This can be this. If it's, you know, in my little spread here, it's like surrounding energy. So it can be close friends and or family um, who are dealing with this sort of energy co-workers, you know, it could be something at work, or maybe you have a worry about work or finances, this position. Um, maybe that's why I was made to say you could be robbing Peter to pay Paul or feel like you are. Uh, if that's the case, again, you're going to want to actually check out your finances and, and get in there and figure out what's going on. Um, yes, we need to pay attention to it. But again, no, we don't need to be paranoid about it. That's not conducive to growth. Um, and maybe that's what spurns you into a different direction, like how the universe redirects you. If it says, okay, well, you've been doing this, you haven't been doing anything wrong, but you're not making the kind of money that you deserve or that you want, maybe why don't you dive into this? That can be how it comes about. 
in terms of love, I was talking about jealousy and things. It, this card can represent those kind of feelings. And maybe that's what this is about. Like, you know, it can be, like I said, people surrounding you. So maybe it's your romantic partner. If you think that something's going on behind your back or whatever, um, don't be presumptuous, especially right now under this um, Mercury retrograde in Pisces. Things can be not what they seem, you know, both ways. Um you know, for the good and for the bad. So don't be presumptuous. Talk to the partner, figure it out. Or, you know, again, do if you need to do research, then do some. Like how this card says, if you need to do more research. Yeah, stop procrastinating to make a decision. If you need to do more research, then do so, but don't overthink the situation. So yeah, don't, don't do this. Don't just make yourself paranoid um, by going over it in your head over and over picturing them, you know, with somebody else or whatever it is, get to the bottom of it. Um, also, if you're having like some sort of like competing energy with your partner, something's um, like you always feel like you're combating with them or, or something in, or that your relationship may be toxic and unhealthy. If you feel that way in your gut, then it's probably correct. Um, and it may be something that you want to get out of, or maybe that's what's keeping you up at night, like thinking, you know, I should leave. Um, and if that's the case, you really should get to figuring out, uh, taking next steps to, you know, how you can go. Sometimes we feel chained, like, how am I going to leave somebody? I need their money, <laughs> you know, to help me pay the rent or whatever it is. Like, how am I going to survive? Um, but if you're in a situation where you're feeling like this because of a relationship that you're in, get out of it. Work and finance. Very nice. Especially since if you are worried about money soon, things are going to turn around big time if they haven't, you know, already begun to. Um, Ten of Pentacles in your position of work and finance. Taurus, I believe, is the fellow earth sign who had that same card in that same placement also upright sitting right underneath the Ace of Pentacles. And like I said at the beginning of the reading, um, a raise or uh, a better position, a new job. If you you know if you don't have a job or if you've been seeking one because you didn't like your job, it's not good enough for you. It's, you deserve better. You deserve more. More is here for you. Again, it may be delayed um, or may have been delayed, and maybe it's just finally going to kick in now um, or during the two weeks for which this reading is. Mercury actually goes direct during this period, so that could. Ease, help the energies to be, become released and to ease up. Um, goes direct on March 9th at like 11.45 p.m., which is, you know, just about March 10th, right? At midnight, it'll be the 10th. So let's just say March 10th, Mercury goes right, um, direct. And by then, it will have moved to Aries out of Pisces. And that may be when you're experiencing this. Again, uh, could be in some sort of offer for a better job. Ten of Pentacles can be about an inheritance or represent an asset. If it's not actual money, it could be a home, home purchase, home sale. Um, just something that makes you feel very secure. So you, you lose that worry that you've been having, right? That, that fades away with the Ten of Pentacles showing up here in this placement. Um, so that was work. Yeah, finances is just really on the uptick. Um, especially where they had been difficult before. It's like a complete turnaround, a total 360 in your financial sector, as they say. Love and romance. Ah, okay. That's interesting, especially since I've been talking about jealousy and distrust and very interesting. And it's right underneath the nine of swords. Huh. This is another one of those placements where you need to get to the root, though. Like, if you're feeling distrust or dissatisfaction in general in your relationships or in your love life, you, you know, you're, you're single, then it's an, the place to start with it crossing the Ace of Pentacles in reverse in particular is what is the root? Is it something I'm doing or not doing? You know, maybe like this. I'm doing this. I'm focusing on negativity. So maybe that's why my relationships are going like this. If I stop that then, you know, maybe they'll go like this. So it can be something like that. If you're in a committed relationship uh, and you're feeling this way, then again, you're going to need to decide if you want to talk to your partner about it. And 
if the two of you are in agreement on improving things and making them better, then you'll need open comp you know, communication. You'll need to trust one another. Um, you need to release any fears that you may have about, you know, your future together and those sort of things and get, be get beyond it together. One person can't do it. Um, alternatively, again, this can be when this is over, this committed relationship that's making you feel like this, this that's crossing it can be representative of a new relationship for you. Again, one that is delayed because it's upside down or a strengthening of your commitment with the, who you are with now could be what's delayed. We see like a gazebo and, you know, an aisle. I always picture like walking down the aisle, especially with the white flowers here, getting married or whatever. But maybe that deepening of commitment is what's delayed because we're having these feelings and we have to work out our differences um, and, be, and be made to feel secure first before we can go any further. Seven of Swords, I call it the card of joy stealing, but we can steal our own joy with, you know, lack of esteem, lack of confidence, you know, being filled with fear and not trusting ourselves, let alone trusting somebody else. So if we can turn that around, then we can turn the relationship around. Let's see. I don't know what time it is. <laughs> I need to put like a timer in front of me. But I want to, you know, try to look at some of the other cards for you. Oop, my mic just fell. Sorry about that, guys. Hope you didn't hear anything weird. Well, it did it again. Okay. So we've seen those cards that were there. Several of them. In the beginning, so let's switch it up a bit. Maybe some will come back. Maybe not. <laughs> How funny is that? I told you that your fellow earth signs all had the night of fire here. And now you've got it. Night of Fire is in Aries, uh, again, where Mercury will be entering soon and um, where he'll be stationed upon his uh, exit from retrograde and going direct. Um, also, Capricorn, you guys have a fire sign preceding you. Some of you may be Cuspians, right? Sagittarius, Capricorns. Um, Mars, the red planet is currently located in your sign. That could be another reason for this. Whatever the reason, this may be an actual person in your life as a court card. It has that potential. A, um, an Aries, Leo or Sagittarius or someone likened to those traits or attributes. They are passionate, adventurous, self-assured and restless. A sudden event that needs your attention right away. Time is of the essence. Think things through carefully. Crowning the masculine with these cards. Oh. There's that devil. This is that worry and fear and feeling stuck. Um, Major Arcana card 15. Ego or the devil. A false sense of entrapment. Being overly focused on material things and negative or fear-based thoughts. This is actually your energy, however, too. It, it represents the sign of Capricorn. Surrounding you, this is worry and doubt, pessimism. Nothing good ever happens to me. Nothing goes my way. Oh, woe is me. I'm down in the dumps. And again, that, that you have the potential to, to manifest self-fulfilling prophecies, negative energies when you're thinking like that. Missing an opportunity, discontentment or boredom. Open your eyes to the possibilities. Because you're focused on like what you don't have or what you feel is not going your way masculine subconscious however the universe or somebody out there in it um you know has been assigned to help you this is a card that represents assistance from the universe it is about the ability to both give and receive it is about unconditional love it is about balance it is about equity and equality and represents totally venus for me especially in this deck i see all three of 
the sign she rules, of course, she um, rules the sign of Libra. Here we have the scales of balance here. Uh, she rules the sign of Taurus, your fellow earth sign. We see all this earth here representing them. And then there's all kinds of scattered air in the back. I'm pretty sure that's Gemini, <laughs> you know, um, gifts of money, time or effort, new career opportunities, receiving a loan or paying off debts. So like I said, something is going to come through for you. That's going to turn everything around those feelings of nine of swords or ace of pentacles in, in reverse, all of a sudden becoming 10 of pentacles upright because some, some, something, something or someone, some sort of energy comes in to assist you. Whether it's just like the universe all of a sudden making everything better, like poof, it seems like out of the sky, everything all of a sudden got better. Or if they send someone your way, you know, a creditor even to say, okay, yeah, I'll approve you for this loan. I'll give you a new credit card or whatever. And that helps you to ease up. Crowning the feminine here. Major Arcana card 18, the moon, represents the sign of Pisces in the tarot, perhaps a, or perhaps one of the other uh, water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, in that water as far as I'm concerned. It's important to trust your intuition, even if you're unsure of what's happening. This is about letting go of the fear, right? So being confident and, and having faith, like true faith. If you pray, don't worry. If you worry, don't pray. So the universe is telling me to move this way. I don't know why, but because I, you know, am not worried because I have faith, I'm going to go ahead and go that way. That's what this is saying. All will be revealed soon. So worry is unnecessary. Pisces could be particularly significant. Again, Mercury also currently located in Pisces. The sun is in Pisces too. <sighs> Surrounding the feminine, the four of fire, four of wands, contentment, peace, and abundance a happy home life and the successful completion of a project. This can be remodeling or like I said, from the last spread, home sales, home purchases, you know, just feeling secure in some way. That's the 10 of pentacles. And at the root, speaking of Aries and Mercury, it is major arcana card for the emperor. One of your fellow earth signs had my emperor from a different deck in the same placement. Structure and organization are important right now. Don't be afraid to take on a leadership role as you have much wisdom to offer. This can be the new job that somebody is being offered, your supervisor role or the boss or your own company, right? An opportunity. Emperor can represent large corporations or government agencies for me. And boom, it's another ace of pentacles for you guys. Crowning. The inflow of abundance, a promising business venture, important documents or contracts. Applicable to any one of those scenarios I gave you, right? If it's a home sale, a purchase or a loan, that's an important document or contract. Emperor, large corporation, government agency, could be a bank that's giving you, you know, worried about money with the devil. Here it comes. Here's the assistance at the root foundation, the two of air, two of swords, being unable or unwilling to make a decision, a stalemate, pretending there's no problem. Now, two of swords for me is not only about being unable to make a decision. It's being unable to make a decision because like we don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. We don't want to disappoint somebody. So, you know, one path is the path that we want to take that our heart wants us to take. And the other path is, you know, the path that our friends or family or parents, whatever our children would have us take. It's better for somebody else. And ultimately what we're guided to do, <laughs> even though we don't know why, um, is to follow the path that, that our heart wants to take. It's like if, it's, if you have to make a choice between your feelings and your choices, your desires and someone else's, you are to choose yours. At the heart of the matter, the eight of summer, you feel that there's more to life than what you're living. So it's time to move on. Maybe moving from a situation that isn't good for you, or perhaps you're being drawn to what would make you happy. Either way, you are in control. And I think that that fits with a lot of the stuff that I was um, seeing in both spreads, seeing and saying in both spreads. If it's about a relationship you need to leave, boom. If it's about moving house, boom. If it's about, you know, again, moving on to a new career or a job, or, you know, going back to school, boom. This is all about moving forward um, 
or on with your life in some sort of way, the eight of summer. It can be very, very spiritual also, um, as can be the ace of earth. So maybe you're moving on because of ascension. Further to that, some advice for you. I'll go ahead and give you some from each deck. Let's do it this way. So this one was extra. <laughs> Overall energy, as a reminder, the Knight of Wands for the masculine from the Animal Tarot. It is Major Arcana Card Zero, the Dreamer. So again, this is about a brand new path. You never walked before. New opportunity for you. You are starting a new adventure. Run free and take a leap of faith. So this is about faith again, belief. Here comes that number two. For the feminine, the Prince of Autumn, this is your energy, or that of another earth sign maybe around you. Trustworthy, dedicated, protective, and funny. It's important to make a detailed plan before starting any new endeavor. Once you have that plan in place, then you can take immediate action and get as much accomplished as possible. I just couldn't help but think about the planet of action, Mars, which again is currently located in your sign. I think this, that's what this is about. But the Prince of Autumn is a Capricorn like yourself, Taurus, or Virgo, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. From the Angel Tarot to the Masculine, it is the Knight of Earth. So you each get one. All right? Each get a Knight of Pentacles. He is loyal, dedicated, honorable, and kind. It's time to buckle down and get things done. This is saying whether you're a male Capricorn or a female Capricorn or a masculine identifying Capricorn or a feminine identifying Capricorn, it's time for you to make a plan and move on with your life. Come to buckle down and get things done. Honor your commitments right, to, your, to thine self, uh, own self be true. You have a guardian angel, so you're not alone. And lastly, for the feminine, the four of earth, being too frivolous or too cautious with money. So that's what I said before, like avoid the extremes, right? You need balance in that area. This card can also, on a more positive note, be about good business decisions and maybe even giving to the less fortunate. But fours are about your foundations, the four of earth in terms of... Um, well, I've, I usually explain it with the job and then I apply it to a relationship. So, you know, that job that you don't like <laughs> and it doesn't like you, you know, you don't get paid what you deserve. You hate waking up in the morning to have to go to it. You know, you don't like the people there. They don't like you. Everybody's miserable. And the only one thing that's good about it is you get a check. You might not even be overwhelmed by the amount of the check, but you get a check like it pays the bills. So that's why you go there but you could really be much more happy somewhere else. The same thing can apply with relationships, right? This relationship, you not, you don't want to look at this person. They don't want to see you. You haven't, you know, slept together or been interested in each other in forever. Um, but you stay together because you split the bills or, you know, you, you have some children in common. You, so you split those and, you know, you don't want to ruffle any feathers or upset anybody. So it's hard to make a decision. Should I go? Should I stay? Um, and again, the card just saying go where, however, and wherever, whatever area of your life it applies card, just saying, go with your heart. And if that means getting out of a situation for you to do so Capricorn, I hope that you have enjoyed your reading and you find it helpful. If you'd like your own, um, or anything that I have available, merchandise, energy healing. A lot of people getting that lately. Um, some, some of my Facebook friends have really helped me to provide, um, strong healing to some cancer patients and to help them to come home from the hospital and all kinds of stuff. We've been doing amazing things on my page. You want to be a part of that. Um, just be my friend on Facebook and chat every now and then. Any and all information to do with that stuff will be in the description box below. Namaste.